Coming up on Cardinals Insider, Paul Goldschmidt now holds a unique major league record. And I'll probably, you know, hold on to maybe my cleats and bat and, you know, stuff like that just because I think it'll be a cool memory to have. Plus, as a kid, who was your favorite baseball player? Funny enough, my favorite player growing up was Albert Pujols. And last year was kind of a dream come true because I was able to play with him. It was pretty special. Lars Newtbar feels fan questions during batting practice. And later, swing and a miss. The Cardinals are world champions for 2006. We close our series on Big Mac land with some World Series memories. All that and more straight ahead on a brand new Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. You know, Paul Goldsmith has produced a lot of amazing stats during his career. This year, he added another, becoming the only player in Major League Baseball history to play a big league game in five countries. Between the Cardinals and D-backs, he's played in the US, Canada, Mexico, England, and Australia. Paul Goldschmidt is many things. An all-star, a silver slugger, and an MVP. But what you might not know is he's also a seasoned world traveler. His first trip across the pond came back in 2014 when he was a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks. The D-backs were set to open the season against the Dodgers at the Sydney Cricket Ground in Australia. So on March 22nd, Goldie and his mates took a flight down under and proceeded to play the only MLB series ever hosted in the continent's history. Well, it's a double, the two base hit from Paul Goldschmidt, who got one off the end of the bat into left center field, and the Diamondbacks... On June 21st, 2016, Goldschmidt, still a member of the D-backs, made his first trip up north to battle the Blue Jays in Toronto. The D-backs split the series, with Goldschmidt going two for four with a double in the final game. Fast forward to April 13th, 2019. Goldschmidt, now a Cardinal, was back on the move this time heading to Monterrey, Mexico for a two-game stint against the Cincinnati Reds. The Cards ended up splitting the series, losing the first game, but going on to win the second, 9-5. Then on June 24th of 2023, it was off to jolly old England to finish off his record-setting travels, splitting a series against the Cubs at London Stadium. And with that series, Goldschmidt did what no other player has done in the history of Major League Baseball, play a regular season game in five different countries. I think it'll be something cool to be look on maybe after my career and I don't know if someone else will, you know, play in five different countries or, or something like that or if I'll get a chance to play somewhere else. And I'll probably, you know, hold on to maybe my cleats and bat and, you know, stuff like that just because I think it'll be a cool memory to have. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. Every once in a while, a Cardinal player takes the mic during BP to field questions on the scoreboard. And earlier this summer, Lars Newtbar took his turn talking to the fans. Hey, 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 ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Bush Stadium. I'm Todd Thomas here in Section 160. And we've got one of our favorite uh, promotions that we do. It's called Hi To Ask The Player. It's where we grab about nine or 10 kids and they get to ask a player any question they want. Today's player, can you give a huge round of applause for Lars Newtbar? Hey Lars, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm excited to be here and answer some questions. When you were a baseball player as a kid, who was your favorite baseball player? Funny enough, my favorite player growing up was Albert Pujols. And last year was kind of a dream come true because I was able to play with him. It was pretty special. What was your favorite thing about being a baseball player? Yeah, what's your favorite thing about being a baseball player? I think for me, I'm so fortunate in that I get to be playing baseball in St. Louis for the St. Louis Cardinals. And I think really being able to go out there and play in front of the best fans in, in the world, um, I think that's my favorite part about playing baseball. What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal? Ooh, I think I think it's a pretty simple one. I think I think I love dogs. I really like dogs. I've had dogs my whole life growing up, and um, I think they're a man's best friend. And and so I think my my answer is dog. What's the farthest you can hit the baseball? I think last year I hit one 452 feet, and then the 
in the fall league, I went like 460 something feet. So wow, that's, I think that's, that's a, a monster bird. shot. Have you ever hit one that far? Uh, no. All right, well, keep working out, my man. What's your name? Flossy. Flossy. I like it. You need to make sure you floss. What's your uh, question <laughs> for Newt? Um, I I love you and is Sonic your favorite character? I think I got that one. She wants to know, is Sonic your favorite character? Is that right? Yeah, is Sonic your favorite character? Yeah, Sonic is my favorite character. I don't know how she knew, but you know, Sonic, Sonic's my favorite. Amazing, and what was your other question? I love you. Oh, she loves you. How about that? Lossie, That's so sweet. Lossie, I love you too. How far did Albert Pujols hit the ball? Okay, so we know that you hit one 460 something feet. He wants to know how far has Albert Pujols hit a home run? You know, if I can hit one 460 something, I think Albert can probably hit one 500 something feet. So, you know, Albert's the best there's ever been. So I don't know the exact answer, but I imagine 500 feet. Who's the best person on your team? Oh, oh Lars, putting you here. Who's the best person on your team? Person or player? Player. All right, she wants to know player. You no, know, it's a toss up. It's either between Goldie, Nolan, or, you know, Andrew Kisner. So I don't really know. I'm going to have to go with Andrew Kisner on that one. And who is your favorite player on the team? Goldie. Goldie. All right, you missed an opportunity there to say Lars. That's okay. All right, hey, can we give Lars new bar a huge applause for coming out today and being a part of this? Thank you guys so much. Coming right up. We're going to start back in the beginning. Grew up in Oklahoma. Grew up a Cardinals fan, am I right? Yeah, I remember watching Yachty, Albert, and Wayno, you know, so getting to be in the clubhouse with them <laughs> last year was pretty surreal, being a little kid and seeing them on TV and then getting to share the field with them. Ryan Helsley steps into the chatters box with Kyle McClellan. Hear a sample of their conversation after the break. Ryan Helsley has been lighting up the gun since his debut in 2019. He joined former Cardinals pitcher Kyle McClellan to talk about his career on a recent episode of the Chatters Box podcast. Welcome back to the Chatters Box podcast. My name is Kyle McClellan, your host, and uh, we are rolling this year. We're halfway through our episodes, and uh, for this episode, we have current Cardinals reliever Ryan Helsley. Ryan, thank you for stepping into the Chatters Box. We're going to start back in the beginning. Grew up in Oklahoma. Grew up a Cardinals fan, am I right? Yeah. So watching all the games, did you guys come to games uh, often or every once in a while? So or? I came to a few games growing up. We actually played in a little World Series here when I was probably around 10 years old, 8 years old, whatever, and uh, we went to the old stadium I think before this one was built um I remember watching Yachty Albert and Wayne you know so getting to be in the clubhouse with them <laughs> last year was pretty surreal being a little kid and seeing them on TV and then getting to share the field with them yeah so you get drafted uh by the Cardinals fifth round if I if I remember right yep. doing my research um you know what's that like you come out of a division two school so uh, fifth round division two coming into the minor leagues just kind of walk through that yeah I mean so my freshman year of college, I played summer ball in California with a lot of like D1 guys and I didn't want to go up first and I wanted to be a kid and have a summer, but I'm, I'm thankful I went because I think that kind of got me ready for pro ball and getting that taste of what it's like facing guys, you know, who are better than me and kind of give myself some confidence the summer before, of, you know, I can get out at a higher level. And, you know, when I first got drafted coming from such a small school, I just tried to take the mindset of like I was, was going to have those guys beat me, you know, if I wasn't good enough, then I wasn't going to be good enough. So I just tried to attack guys from the get go. And I think I kind of carried that throughout the minor leagues and, you know, kept it with me in the big leagues. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for, for being on the Chatters Box podcast. And uh, for all of you listening, you can uh, you can watch this on the YouTube channel, the Cardinals YouTube channel, along with all our other podcasts that we've done this year, going back to last year. And uh, we look forward to seeing the next episode. Coming up. In the air to left, well hit. Back is Craig. What a team. What a ride. The Cardinals are world champs in 2011. We close our celebration of Big Mac land with a look at its World Series memories. Stay with us. No place takes you in depth with the Cardinals like our YouTube channel. Get to know the players. Come along for one-of-a-kind experiences and hang out with personalities from across Cardinals Nation. 
Plus, we capture the days and moments that make Cardinals baseball so special. Just search St. Louis Cardinals on YouTube and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. St. Louis Cardinals baseball. We've been celebrating the 25th anniversary of Big Mac Land. This week is the final installment of our six week series on all the history the section has seen. And we end with the most important moments. Runner going, there it goes. It's in Big Mac Land. Oh, he knocked out the eye in Big Mac Land. He hit the eye and crushed it. And the ball's up in Big Mac Land. It hit Redbird's painting of the mountain. Get up, baby, get up. Oh, yeah. I think he hit the M on Big Mac. Albert hits it out to deep left. Number 701 into Big Mac land. Big Mac land is a staple in Cardinals history. And as such, it's been there when the Cardinals play on the biggest stage. And that's one into left center field. Coming to get it to end the night is Holiday, and the Cardinals win game one, three, two. It's seen two pennant winners, but the real memories are in a pair of fall classic victories. In 2006, its first season in a new stadium, the team took Big Mac land to the World Series in spectacular fashion, on the backs of Albert Pujols, Jim Edmonds, and David Eckstein. The 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss, that's it! And the St. Louis Cardinals are world champions in 2006. Then, just five years later, in 2011, the Cardinals reached the World Series again, where Big Mac Land had another front row seat, this time propelled by Chris Carpenter, Albert Pujols once again, and a kid from St. Louis named David Freeze. Freeze hits it in the air to center. We will see you tomorrow. Over the past 25 years, Big Mac Land has borne witness to greatness in several forms, from a home run chase, to pennant winning seasons, to a record setting battery. But the most important stat in Cardinals history is measured in right field, making 06 and 11 the greatest memories and moments the Golden Arches have shined down on. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Travis Hawkins. Still to come, find out what minor leaguers are making an impact this season. That's up next. Cardinals Insider is a team effort, and that includes you. We'd love to hear from you. To get in touch with the show, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click on the Contact Us tab. And while you're there, you can rewatch old episodes and check out our podcast, too. I'm Newton News. I'm Lars Newpark. It's all at cardinals.com insider. The major league level gets most of the attention in any organization, but what happens in the minor leagues has a big impact on the future. Our Brett McMillan has a roundup of players making an impact this year. Thanks, Ozzy. Yes, that is definitely true. What happens down in the minor leagues eventually does find its way up to St. Louis, and there are quite a few guys who have made an impact so far in 2023. Swing and a drive to deep right field. Looking up, Suleri at the wall. It's gone. Chandler Redmond, touch them all. Chandler Redmond has been one of the best power hitters in all the minors this season. The former 32nd rounder out of Gardner Webb was fast approaching 25 homers here late in July. Speaking of offense, Mason Wynn has turned it on in recent weeks. As the month winds to a close, he was hitting nearly 280 with 11 homers and 45 driven in. Plus, of course, his defense is proving top notch. Mason was in the Futures game last year. This year, it was Tink Hens and Victor Scott II for the Cardinals. Hens has become one of the most highly touted pitchers in the system, and Scott, well, he can just flat out fly. Runner goes, got a great break. Throw down a second, no chance. There's two other arms getting a lot of notice, both of them up in Memphis, where Michael McGreevy and Gordon Graceffo are clipping right along. McGreevy 8-1 through his first 17 starts of the year, and Graceffo overcoming some early season turbulence 
to earn a 2.25 ERA through his first 12 innings in July. The Cardinals player development Twitter is the best place to learn more about all the players we've mentioned today and also just the Cardinals minor league activity in general, including organizational players and pitchers of the month. Should be noted that three guys who were player or pitcher of the month organizationally this year in the minor leagues have actually made their way up to St. Louis at one point in Matthew Libertor, Luke and Baker, and also Yvonne Herrera. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. Here's another story we think you'll like. If you're a fan who gets to the game early, then you've probably seen an athletic association parade in action. We host about 30 different associations all season long, so that's a lot of kids who get to experience the field here at Bush Stadium. Today, I got a chance to talk with a few of those kids. All right, I'm here with my pal Mason and his baseball team. Mason, what's your baseball team's name? I'm Wild Horse. Yeah. The Wild Horse. You guys are all part of Wild Horse, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, what position do you play, Mason? I'm um, mostly center field. What is your favorite part about playing baseball? Um, hitting home runs. Let's show us your best swing. Three, two, one. Whoa, I think I just saw three home runs. Who's your guys' favorite Cardinals player? Uh, Nolan Arenado. Nolan Arenado. Yachty. All right, we got two Nolan Arenados, one Yachty. If you guys could spend the day with Nolan Arenado and Yachty Armelina, that would be quite a day, by the way. If you could hang out with them, what would you guys do? Um, i make him um, give me batting practice. Yeah, he'd be pretty good to ask batting advice from. What about you? Probably teach me a bunch of stuff. I'll have him play a wiffle ball with me. What do you like to say when Lars Newtbar goes up to bat? Newt. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Tim in Roanoke, Illinois asked, what was it like to film the baseball buds? Well, Tim, it was a lot of fun because it was the first time that I had a chance to have interaction with one of my favorite players, Johnny Bench. And then of course, uh, I was very familiar uh, with the chicken having started my career in San Diego. So having the opportunity to be on camera with both of them and, and entertain some young kids uh, doing my backflip, it was a lot of fun. I'm Ozzie Smith, shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals otherwise known as the Wizard of Oz. Hey, how come you're called the Wizard of Oz? How come? Well, maybe because of little things like this. Oh, wow. Well, it was, it was pretty early on in my career, you know, so the fact that I, I had a chance to, to interact with kids at, at, at such a young age, I think was something that gave me the experience as I, as I went along to, uh, to get a little bit better at it and, uh, and a little bit more comfortable. So um, it was a great experience for me. Thanks for the question, Tim. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, don't go anywhere. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. All right, everyone, we need some Cardinal theme ticket ideas. We need them fast. Don't we already have the best theme tickets? Like teacher's night and college night. The racing night? It's all on cardinals.com slash theme. This whole meeting could have been a letter. Competing at the pro level is serious business, but it's still a game, and games are designed to be fun. This week, we asked the guys what their funniest on-field memory is. Uh, Luke and Baker. Him trying to run the bases is some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. Anytime someone kind of trips and face plants, I can't think of a really particular one, but anytime that happens, it's always pretty funny. Well, we've had the lights turn off mid-game in the minor leagues a bunch. I mean, that's always, that's always kind of a treat. There's funny things that happen all the time. Hitting first base the wrong way and, you know, tumbling over. People miss pop-ups, get hit in the head. I, I can't think of one thing, but I always, I do enjoy watching the blooper video that they play at Bush Stadium with all the bloopers that happen over the course of the season. It's, it's pretty funny. Last year, I actually got the opportunity to see Delvin Perez 
run the bases like a home run on a routine pop fly to left field and didn't know it until he hit third base. That was probably the most comical thing I've ever seen. People trying to chase after a cat and they just couldn't catch it. And there was a, a like a raccoon or something in the minor leagues and so everyone was trying to like shush it off the field but didn't want to get too close to it. When I was in Detroit there was like a goose that, that flew onto the field and w it wouldn't leave. It became like this rally goose because we won a bunch of games after that. So watching the security guards chase that goose was probably the funniest thing. When I was in high school, I had a kid, I was on the bench, and a kid hit a double down the line, and I, I was screaming from the dugout, it was foul, foul, foul. So we, he ran off the bases to go pick up his bat, and we tagged him out. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, from the bench, I was, I was causing trouble, so that was pretty funny. That's it for this episode. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com insider, or watch full episodes on YouTube. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you right back here next week.